All right, and related rates, what the heck are they? Well, if you've been in calculus and you've been in class, you've probably already seen them a little bit in class and have been a little bit confused, or maybe a lot confused. This is sort of like the hardest topic in derivatives because it's word problems. Everyone hates word problems, and everyone hates differentiation with weird stuff. So it, you kind of mix those two together, and they, these get pretty rough. This, um, the reason I put this incredible block of letters here is to point out and just drill home the thing I'm going to keep drilling, which is that whenever you're doing a related rates problem, all the derivatives have a dt downstairs. dt, 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 dt. You notice these are just a bunch, all these letters are ones I made up. dadt could mean the rate of change of area. drdt could be the rate of change of radius. p could be pressure, v could be volume, j could be javelin throws. Q could be quantity, N could be number of things. But because they have T downstairs, that means the units are going to be in time. So you notice that like, if we talk about how fast someone's driving, it's meters per second, right? There's time downstairs. If I asked you, how much do you pay in rent? Well, it's dollars per month. So a unit of time is always in the denominator whenever you're talking about rates. And that's why every derivative we're going to take is going to have a T downstairs. This is derivative of y with respect to t. And the units, therefore, are going to be, if y is in meters, t is in seconds, this will be meters per second. dl dt could be the rate of change of the length of something. Could be in centimeters, if the word problem is in centimeters, could be meters, whatever. But dl dt is the rate of change of l with respect to t. So hopefully this didn't blow you away too much, but I just want to drill that in. So whenever we take the derivative of an expression, now we're going to be doing it in terms of t, not x. So traditionally, if you, know, if you had f of x equals x squared in any previous chapter or even previous section in calculus, the derivative would have been f prime is just 2x, right? The reason there was no d, d weirdness was because it was all in terms of x. But then in the previous section, we got into implicit differentiation. So we had to take the derivative of something like you know, x plus y. And then we'd have the derivative of x was still 1, but the derivative of y was all of a sudden dy dx. So it turned out that if you take the derivative of anything besides x, you're going to have to put a d something dx next to it. And that's what's going to happen here. Even though there's never going to be a time, like the, the letter t is never going to appear in the formulas that we use in related rates. We're going to use things like the equation of volume. You know, the vo volume formula for a, a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. The area of a circle is pi r squared. The Pythagorean theorem, again, there's no time in there. It's just a bunch of distances, right? Side length, side length, side length. These are all in meters. And yet for this section only, for related rates problems, we're always going to take derivatives of these things in terms of t, which is kind of wacky. But what that means is that all those letters I showed you on the previous page, you're going to have to write down next to these things, just like it was implicit differentiation again. So derivative of, if we take the derivative, with respect to t of this entire equation, we'll just do it one term at a time. Derivative of volume, or v, with respect to t, is just dv dt. It's just like in the um, implicit differentiation, when we took the derivative of y, got a dy dx. So dv dt is going to equal 4 thirds pi. That's just a constant. So now the only variable on the right side is, is r cubed, right? What's the derivative of a power? Well, it'd be t the old power, which is 3, times r squared. But then, just like implicit differentiation, I need that dr dt next to it. So the, d so the deal is that whenever you're taking a derivative of these things in related race problems, whenever you take the derivative of any variable whatsoever for any reason with any rule, you're going to have a d whatever dt next to it. Derivative of v is just dv dt. Derivative of r, of r cubed is 3r squared dr dt. There's that d letter dt after everything we do. So now let's do this one. Derivative of area is just da dt. And then derivative of r squared, just like last time, is going to be 2r dr dt. All right, Pythagorean theorem is another formula we're going to see a lot, especially in the upcoming video about triangles. Because um, triangles just happen a lot. So Pythagorean you'll see all the time. But you're going to be taking a derivative of it with respect to t. So in this particular case, we're talking about x, y, and c. I guess there are three sides of a triangle. 
So we'll do the power rule on each one of these. We'll get 2x. But then we have to have that dx dt is sort of like the price we pay for taking a derivative of something other than t. And then the 2y, the y squared, same thing happens. 2y dy dt. And same thing happens to c. Oops, equals 2c dc dt. All right, so we're going to get lots more practice with this. I just want to use this first part of this video to drill in that whenever you take the derivative of anything in the related rates chapter, it's always with respect to t. I mean, I've seen like two problems in my entire tutoring career that were not with respect to time, and they were sort of more basic problems, not, the, not these harder ones. So here's the formulas. Um, where do we get these formulas? Like, how do we know what formula to write down? to begin with, to take, the, to take a derivative. Well, it turns out that we need to get really good at spotting the words in the problem that would give you a derivative. So for example, right now we're just going to practice naming variables. So if you saw this sentence, or this little piece of a sentence, in a related rates problem, let's just write down the letter we'd want to write down. So they're saying, find the rate of change of volume. So how fast is volume changing? Well, if you followed what I was talking about before, that would be dvdt, would be the rate of change of volume. And that's what they asked for. Find the rate of change of volume. So that's d volume dt. And rate just kind of automatically means time, like I said. All right, so let's say they want to know how fast is the area of the circle changing. So what's the name of the variable that they're asking for? Well, they're asking for the rate of change of area. So if we call area a, which makes a lot of sense, then it would just they're asking for da dt. So that's the rate of change of area with respect to time, or the rate with which you know, rich, uh, area is changing. So sometimes they're asking for that. Like all the sentences I've given you here, they're asking for a variable. But they also could have said, hey, find the, area, the rate of change of area when the radius is changing at 3 centimeters per second or something. So then you're like, oh, rate of change of area, uh, radius. Well, gee, that's dr dt. How fast is the water level changing? Well, I don't know. We'd have to give the name of that, we'd have to give the water level a name like, I don't know, D for depth. So then we're looking at DD DT, which looks silly, but of course, you know, this part's always the same. So just whatever letter you, you put here must be the variable in the problem. Let's do some more. How fast is the rabbit's weight changing? Hmm. Well, W seems like a good letter for weight. So let's just see how fast that's changing with respect to time. How fast is the plane's altitude changing? Uh, I don't know. Let's call it you know, we already used capital A for altitude. We could use A again, or we could just use P or something, like maybe P for plane's altitude. I don't know. So that'd be DP, DT. Doesn't matter what letter you pick, because what's going to happen is in these problems, you always have a diagram. And any, any quantities you use, you'll end up labeling on the diagram. So if you decide to call the altitude P, you're going to have a drawing at some point, you know, maybe it'll look better than mine, of a you know, P as being the plane's altitude. Not a problem, you just got to know which letters you're using and what they correspond to. How fast is the circumference of a circle, C, growing? I don't know. That's a rate of, sounds like a rate of change to me. So you can see how no matter what they ask for or what they give us, we're just going to pick a letter that represents that thing and then put a D in front of it and put it over a DT, and that's the rate of change. What is the rate of change of price? I don't know what this problem's about, but I know the rate of change of price is probably going to be dp dt. Now, the reason we're doing this is so we'll be able to plug in, because when we take the derivative of some formula during the course of solving that problem, there's going to be a price in the formula. We take the derivative, we're going to end up with a dp dt. So we've got to know either what to plug in or what to solve for.